This episode of Gripping Golf is brought to you by Sycamore Ridge in All right, welcome to Gripping Golf. This is a podcast with two of my friends, John Johnson, Dave Miller, and we just love golf and we want to spread it all over the place. Let's that, do it. That sounded awesome. That sounded <laughs> yeah, <it's> very suggestive. <laughs> who it makes wants, it sound important. <laughs> yeah, who do, who doesn't want to spread it all over the place? <laughs> Like, peanut, like peanut butter or like jelly? Yeah, I don't. Uh, maybe together. I sure. don't know. Have yeah. you seen the can that has them together? Yeah. Do they I, make no. that anymore? I don't know if they do, but I'm not. I'm not down with that Who's, product. Yeah, not it's down a with it's it? a ratio. You have to agree to the ratio. Right. What is the ratio then? I Let's no get idea. into it. Yeah. yeah. Not necessarily you don't know? golf related. Okay, but, yeah. but what if what if if you're making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? How much peanut butter and how much jelly? Sixty forty. Sixty forty. Yeah. Which way? Pe- peanut butter. Peanut butter. Heavy. Mm. Yeah. Chunky. Peanut butter? No, no. No? No. That's why you buy peanut butter. If you want peanuts, just put peanuts on your sandwich. <laughs> it sounded like you didn't say peanuts. It sounded like you said something else. Deep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> start um, over. <laughs> no, no, we are not no, starting I, over. I am a heavy on the peanut butter ratio person. I, I toast two slices uh-huh. of bread. Wow. Put peanut butter on both slices, heavy, and mm. some jelly in between. So yeah. like 80-20? Or seventy five twenty five. I would say it's probably closer to ninety ten. Whoa! Wow! Whoa! It's yeah. a peanut so just butter a little, sandwich. Bit, yeah, <laughs> just, it's just what a it is. Little bit of sweetness uh-huh. in there. Just exactly. Yeah. Yep. Man, did you ever have those crustables? That was like a peanut butter jelly sandwich in like, and you I, just had a little. I know what you're talking about. I, I've never eaten one myself. Oh my gosh. Which is crazy because I eat a lot of terrible stuff, but yeah. I have not had one of those. So I'm closer. I'm not. I'm not ninety ten like Dave is, but yeah. I'm I'm like you're seventy-five. Heavy? Yeah, heavy I'm a heavy peanut, peanut butter, peanut butter. Right. and not chunky peanut butter on uh, peanut butter jelly sandwich, but chunky peanut butter on other things is really good. Really? It's really good. Yeah, yeah. you guys are wrong. I don't yeah, know. I don't like mis- mixing the crunchy with the smooth. Yeah. Don't like. It? Mm. Yep. I don't eat Snickers bars either for that reason. Because of the peanuts and the the nugget and yep. the caramel, what I don't even know what's in a Snickers. I couldn't even uh, tell you. You nailed it's it. It's good. That's yeah. a chocolate. Okay, and then you forgot the caramel. Dad. Caramel. Yeah. Mm. Is it caramel or caramel? Depends on where you're from. Yeah. Oh, is there a difference? No. no. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> you guys were so. You guys yep. were so into that. That's awesome. Well, yeah. So okay. So. I played golf this week. You know, I had uh, maybe a decent week, I would say. I shot even at, at league, and we're going to talk about I had what was my best shot, what was my worst shot. That's awesome. Let's so, totally do that. Let's see. Let's start with the worst shot. Worst shot. Uh, I topped a drive on two today. No, I didn't top it. I pulled it way left. Yeah, The, it, the one you topped was on one. That was on one. Okay, yes. Oh, you, <laughs> yes. you did it too. Huh? Yes. Oh. I topped a drive on one. I don't it was that. amazing. And Dave gave me a great suggestion. Stay in it. Stay in your swing. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it worked. Yeah. And then yeah. I'd say the best shot of the week is, uh, wow, it's a tie between the four iron I hit today on three at Sycamore, <laughs> or it's the five iron on 15 into the par five and almost holding it for an albatross. That would probably be. Yeah. That sounds pretty awesome. They were both struck really well. Yeah. So that's why I say it was just two really good swings. So there you go. How about Possibly. Miller? Yeah. Uh, so I played a couple times league also Tuesday night played this morning, played really well in both actually. Um, I would say, how'd you end up in league? (laughs) Thanks Billy. (laughs) Uh, My partner and I were comfortably in third place at one point and then we went on a three week slide with loss half and a loss and ended up tied for fifth place with Billy and his partner and lost a scorecard playoff. Yeah. Mm. Took it. So close. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I guess that's one of the things running the league. You can't just be like, all right, it's no. Fine. Yeah. You, know, you can't do that. Fair. If it makes you feel any better, I think Todd like e- net eagled the, the 18th hole nice. to win us the match. Yeah. I mean, so yeah. That'll going out it. high. Mm-hmm. Do yeah, what? It is what it is. That'll do it. Oh yeah. It was yeah. a good one. We should, we should have played harder. That's all. You should have. Yeah. 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 I mean, our opponents, they, they totaled 10 putts. On yeah. That's holes. what Pete said. That's, so, in, that's impressive. Between the two yeah. of them? Between the two of them. Wow. It's kind of getting buzz sawed yeah. a little bit. Yeah. 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 On it, nine it holes, they had 10 putts. Yeah, between the two of them for, the, yeah, for their low scores. Were they chipping in? Oh, no. for their low scores. Okay, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But anyhow. Yeah, um, sorry. So I would say my worst shot probably came on number nine, my tee ball today. Mm-hmm. I pulled it into the woods, um, which ultimately led to a double. Yeah. Um, my best shot, 
I have got two as well. I would say my first birdie putt of the day this morning on number one, I had, what, 30 feet maybe? Oh, 25, yeah. 25, 30 feet? Yeah. Nailed it for birdie. Started, oh. off, started the round off right. He was a machine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> With the machine. With the machine With the putter. Machine. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, the second best shot was on league night uh, mm-hmm. on hole number 18. Um, I was in the fairway uh, 75 yards out, and I needed to sink it for par. I hit the pin. I, I didn't make par, but <laughs> it, it was still a really good shot. So it felt good right off the face. I was like, oh, that's got a Sounds chance. Sounds good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Heck yeah. John. What about you, John? Oh, well, I'm on a, I'm just finished a two week hiatus from golf. So good for you. Finally played this morning and had a litany of bad shots. Yeah. Uh, missed up with that? probably three or four, two to three foot putts. Mm. Just sloppy. But no I'm one not, was giving you those? No. <laughs> I'm not going to say that those were my bad shots. My bad yeah. shot was a 85 yard wedge into the fifth hole that went 20 yards. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> like I, I was standing 85. over it. I'm like, was that after your drive? No, no, no. I'd, oh, okay. I'd hit it into the weeds. And oh, okay. You had a punch out. It punched out and oh, okay. had a wedge. And I was standing there going, this is really wet. I bet I'm going to take a big divot. And boy, I did. <laughs> it just started before the ball. So that's my bad one. Oh, that's my, your good one. My good one was on 17. I had a four iron, mm. pin high. So. Oh, that's good. Yeah. yeah that pin was, was back there. Totally today. flushed. That was yeah. a good shot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was into the wind. Yeah. Three too, putted yeah. for a bogey. No, it was downwind. It yeah. was downwind. It was, yeah, it was still it was a downwind. good shot. Yeah. yeah, it was still a good shot. Yeah, it regardless. Was totally flushed. So I was just happy with that. Nice. So that's the one that I, I put in the memory bank. Wow. Oh, yeah. It's a good memory bank. It, well, there's a few in there. Yeah. yeah we need to grow that memory bank. More. More. Is the bad? The bad is clear in everyone's golf memory bank. Yeah. The bad is outweighing the good. Substantially, I just need one shot to drive home and think about. But we I'm need like, to we need to flip that. Like, just think about the good ones all the time. Absolutely, N- you know? Nicholas never miss hit a shot. Exactly. Yeah, never. He I never have either. One yeah. <laughs> <laughs> today, starting today, I have never <laughs> <laughs> missed a shot. <laughs> It's like Bobby uh, today telling him to be positive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my gosh. <laughs> positive thoughts. That was positive a little bit shots. of a chore positive. today, but he yeah. started getting there. He did. Uh, yeah. I Really, he did. He turned yeah. around. Yeah. That was He played well on the back nine. Yeah. I mean, he had some holes where it was like, but whatever. Oh, yeah. he's, had, uh, he's had drastic improvements, though. Yeah, he you shot. really uh, see it. 83. 83. Today? Not today. Oh, no, he shot he 105 has. today. He shot 83 okay. out at um, uh, Hoots Hollow. Nice. Yeah. And tell everybody what his handicap is. Twenty. He's a twenty-four index, twenty-four point four, something like that. So he's at Sycamore. He's a twenty-eight. Yeah. Which is really when you don't have a lot. Of, sorry, when you don't have a lot of high handicappers and you're dotting the card. Yeah. It's a little confusing. <laughs> you know, you're like, wait, dots. <laughs> there's twenty-eight strokes. There's eighteen holes. Yeah. Okay, so ten of them. Ten. He gets two shots, and then you have to figure out which ten, yeah. which is. It's not hard, but at the same time, it was like, yeah, it's a lot of dots. It's almost yeah. algebra. It yeah. was, yeah. yeah. I had to take a nap. <laughs> yeah. But so, so Dave, you know, we're doing this new segment called Did Dave Buy Something? Uh, so tell us, did you buy anything this week? <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did, as a matter of fact. Yeah. This is not going to be an empty segment. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> let's talk. Let's let's dive right in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So for this week, uh, I think last time we were all together, I talked about my driving iron that I got. Your and, Strixon. Yeah. 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 What so. is it? Is it? What was the Strixon? I forgot. Yeah. I've seen it. I know what it is, but I can't remember the exact the name ZU85 of it. It's the ZU85 utility. Pretty club. Oh. Yeah. It is a pretty club. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And so and, but you reshafted it since then. Yep. Sorry. That's, I'll that's just stop talking yeah. and let you talk. Steal my thunder. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it, it had a uh, KBS Tour hybrid prototype 105X shaft in it. Hit it on the range a few times, and actually I, I got along with it just fine, but I decided I would buy a lighter, mm-hmm. slightly less stiff flex shaft, and... Uh, all of a sudden, the club has come to life now. So, oh, yeah. yeah. You hit that well. I hit yeah. a lot of really good shots with yeah. it today. You hit so. it on four. Mm-hmm. That was a good shot. Yep. And then you hit it on 17. Yes, I hit it yeah. there as well. Yeah. yeah. I, I hit it a couple times today. I hit it on 12 as well. That's where I hit, I hit my tee ball on 12 with that. 12. Yeah. 12. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, that was a great shot on yeah. 12. So oh, I man. Got, I got a lot of good mileage out of it today. It's yeah. It's got a nice ball flight. It doesn't mm-hmm. spin much. Yeah. And when you hit it right in the middle of the face, which lately has been going okay, mm-hmm. uh, it just doesn't spin. So it's like a perfect yeah. ball flight. Yeah. What was oh. the outcome on 12? I don't remember. Uh, 
it, it wasn't great. Well, what, like, you're, well, I was you're bringing it up for a reason. Well, yeah. because he three-putted. Yeah, oh, well, he, well. he duked me on that one Did because it? I was trying to tap in my my second putt, and yeah. he was just like. Ah, <laughs> like verbal, I did that. You got billied. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It was like verbal diarrhea <laughs> as I was putting, <laughs> and it was loud. <laughs> oh, really? Was I it don't remember go- this at all. Yeah. Was it not going well? I don't remember. Okay. Yeah. He was saying yeah. something to his buddy Matt. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then I just <laughs> spinning a yarn. <laughs> I was like, oh man, that was that was slightly embarrassing. I would have given you that. Yeah. Well. Oh. You know, if you had, I would have shot a 75 today. I know. <laughs> Damn it. So, yeah. You beat me by three yeah. today. Doesn't matter. Yeah. But yeah. So, no. you know, I got. That Wait, was the, it does matter. That was it does matter. One, that was the one putt on that nine I got overly aggressive with. Yeah. My first putt. Yeah. yeah. And I, I sailed. It was downhill. Past. Yeah, yeah, it was downhill. So, yeah. Yeah. Don't leave him short. Yeah. Hit him fast. I'm not upset with uh, it. He was trying to give Bobby a great example, and he did. Yeah. Bobby leaves a lot of his putts short, and, yeah. and Dave was like, Bobby, watch this. And he just <laughs> nailed it. Yeah, just four run it by. Past. Yeah, yeah, just run, just it, run by. it by. You it's, always make him coming back. It's got a chance yeah. if you yeah. run it I mean, by. we did have a match going on, so, you know, it's weird. You get the yeah. match play, stroke play Gosh, mentalities dang. going on. Yeah. yeah. We should talk. Okay, so before we get into your, you have bought stuff, but before we get, we had our own match. Did you guys do a match in your? No. Okay, we did our own match. So it was no. uh, my buddy Matt came and played with us and it was bobby and dave against us and they wiped us clean nice. three up on the front nine Woo. yeah yeah and then four up overall you beat us four up yeah but you really? guys won the back nine we won so. the back nine in the nassau but yeah. it, it was you guys cleaned our clock pretty yeah. good yeah i had some i had some good holes where when i needed them and and bobby had a bunch of <laughs> net really low scores. yeah, yeah I mean, he did i mean that's what you need he like, net he parred 11 yeah, yeah he net par or uh, no i'm sorry he p- gross parred yeah. 11 for a net eagle yeah he had a couple of eagles today mm-hmm. good for him mm-hmm. and and Okay, uh, just 105. So he had some bad holes too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Because he started out he's seven, hard. seven, uh, seven, yeah. oh. six, six. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It was steady, a rough start. Steady high rough. numbers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then he remembered to start turning his hips, and all yeah. of a sudden the ball went straight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the drive on yeah. seven, that was the best drive I've ever seen him hit. Good. I mean, he yeah. just turned on it club came right through the slot and just yeah. bam released all the power guy. Yeah. yes he is like yeah. he gets he gets that swing figured out stand yeah. back i know we're the all funny, in trouble the funniest part was and and maybe it's not funny if you ride with him all the time but the funniest part is even after he smoked that drive he still had something bad to say about yeah. it. <laughs> it's not it's about focusing what did he energy. say uh, i can't remember yeah, <laughs> there's there was there's always something like every shot there's yeah. something yeah and then when he left his wedge behind like once yeah. he realized that, it oh, took him man. out of two holes completely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he couldn't get past that. Yeah, yeah, that was that was funny. Okay, so back to the uh, ZU. Yeah, so I, yeah. I put the new shaft in it, and mm-hmm. I love it. All of a sudden, that's that's one of my favorite clubs now. So it, for now, it may take the hybrid out of play. Ooh. We'll see. I didn't use the hybrid at all today. Which, no, you didn't. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, but but that was that was the thing that I bought for this week. Nice. More to come. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing else. Uh, Nothing else. Well. Yeah. I mean, how long do we want this segment to go? Yeah, we can spread this one out. Oh, I mean, yeah. I, I imagine you I probably are, make a, a a financially responsible purchase every week yeah. for golf. So, sometimes I do all my purchases in mass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a bull. I, I just go on a run. <laughs> well, that okay. So now, now that we know you've reshafted it it's much better let's move into birdies and bogeys all right so we've got some topics here that dave's going to bring up and we're going to discuss them so i love it yeah so the first one is kind of the big one in the golf world right now is uh the fedex cup playoffs Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. uh obviously today's round is delayed because of Henri. Oh, yeah. Henri. yeah Yeah, they pushed it to tomorrow but uh they're playing uh liberty national Ooh. Out in Jersey, Jersey. Oh, that thing is beautiful. Yeah. I've never. I, I mean, I've seen it on TV. Yeah, but I've never oh, I mean, I've never been it. there. But yeah, just the footage of it. You're you're looking at the New York skyline. Gorgeous. Oh man, and it, it, <laughs> you're looking at the New York skyline, and it looks like they're out in the country. Right. So the craziest setup. Right. So, you know, two, thumb, two thumbs up for a course like that. Yeah. Who can explain the FedEx Cup? How it works? You know, it changes every year. Yeah. Which yeah. is the crazy thing about it. Uh-huh. So um, I think you start with, what, the top 120, 125 Five, golfers? Yeah, yeah I mm-hmm. think so. Um, and then you're, you're building up points throughout the year. 
to, mm-hmm. to cushion a lead. And uh, we're looking at it right now. Colin Morikawa is at the top. Yeah. Because, you know, he had a fantastic year. Yeah. Um, Won some tournaments. Yeah. Just not sure yeah. if you've heard of them. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they take those top 125 first tournament. I think they cut the field in half after yeah. that. Yeah. So I think you have to be in the top. Um, 75, so, it yeah, looks like. 75. So 75. Yep. To go to uh, the second tournament. And then they take, is it like 35 after I that? I think, Something? yeah, 30 yeah. Or 35. Pretty yeah. small yeah. amount. Yeah. And I don't know if they're still doing it the same way, but if you're in the top spot mm-hmm. of the rankings, you're basically put out to a 10-stroke lead in the tournament. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, For in, in Atlanta. That's right. And I then remember, everybody's yeah. catching you. Yeah. Everybody's trying to catch up to you. So, so, it's, so it's, it's 25 at the Northern Trust, 70 for the BMW Championship, and then it looks like it goes down to 30. Okay. So for at East Lake, so yeah. Tour Championship. Yeah. yeah. And then the winner of it all gets big money. Big. It's like yeah. a $10 Two? million dollar annuity or yeah. something like oh, that? Oh, wow. It's yeah. awesome. Is that a yeah. lot of money? It's a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> it's more than I know what to uh-huh. do with. Yeah. <laughs> what would you do with that amount of money? <laughs> Whatever I wanted. I guess, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> No reference to office space. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever I wanted. <laughs> yeah, so that's going on. Uh, I I really haven't paid any attention to the the um, Northern Trust this this week at all. So I don't even know who's winning. So I watched quite a bit, and yeah, I think John Rahm was in the lead. Ooh, last I looked. Yeah, but, um, I mean the leaderboard's packed with. All the big names. Yeah, yeah, all the big names yeah. are up there. And e- the, except for one. Except for one. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Who is the one? Well, uh Ricky Fowler didn't yeah. make the playoffs. So uh how do you guys feel about his season? It's it's been a rough one for him. I oh. think it's yeah, y- you know, I, I don't know particularly for this season, but I know for me, I feel like a lot of people harp on his the flatness of his swing, yeah, and and I think when he's off, and I think this is any person that has a flat swing. I have a flat swing, you know. When when you're off, you're off, like, and it's hard to get it back. But he's, I think he's a great player. Mm-hmm. I think it would be amazing to see him win uh, a major, but I don't know without some major swing changes if he will, because keeping it consistent yeah. for four rounds that's hard. I mean, mm-hmm. w- watching him like he's won the players twice or I think once. so well, once okay. or twice, yeah. yeah. He won, he won it. He won, he won against the Charlotte, playoff. And he won in Charlotte, the okay. Wachovia. Yeah. Which, yeah. You know, that's a tough tournament to win. Totally. That's a big course. But he beat Sergio in the playoff, didn't he, at the players? When he hit it to, like, three feet on 17 a couple times? Yes. Okay. I, I think that's yeah. who it was, yeah. Yeah. And he, that, was, that was impressive. That's when I thought, okay, he's going to get the run going. He's yep. going to – here he comes, and he's going to win a major, and then nope. Yeah. He's kind of full. I don't even remember what year that was, but that was a few years ago. Yeah. And so. he's one of those golfers that whenever he hits the ball – Sounds awesome. Oh, yeah. Like he is a ball yeah. striker. But so. it's amazing because I think a lot of times I, I find that he's um, – I thought he was one of the longer hitters on tour, and he's really not. No. Hmm. I, I, for some reason, I had always thought he was one of the longer yeah. hitters. But he's – I mean, compared not compared to, like, Bubba Watson and no, um, but, you know, Bryson the, DeChambeau. Like and high 290s, maybe threes, but – Yeah, he's not as long as I thought he was. No. So. But yeah, it's yeah. it's kind of odd to not see him in the mix. That's yeah. for sure. Like for me, I you know, sure his swing is flat. I just always felt like he's going to have back issues by the time he's in his forties. You know, it's just a lot the way of torsion. He, yeah, the the move he puts yeah, to the ball. Right. But I think for a lot of these guys, um, and I think you saw it with uh, Jordan Spieth, it, it's a mental thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, it it always came so easily for these guys, and I think. You know, the first one in my lifetime that I can remember that really struggled, like David Duvall, right? Oh, guy yeah. had everything oh, yeah. in his hands, and yeah. then it all just oh, fell, fell apart, apart. Uh-huh. right? Mm-hmm. And so to me, I think a lot of these guys, is, it's it's a mental thing. Like, Ricky mm-hmm. all of a sudden's like, where's my game? And, you know, it, it's it, – we've all experienced at an amateur level yeah. just yeah. on a weekend game, like – I, start I experience of, it during the, every round. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, Thank God know. we don't make our living. At it. Yes. <laughs> right. Right. And so, uh, you know, to me, somebody who hits that many balls, who does it for a living, he's clearly an athletic dude. Yeah. Right. It, it's got to be a mental thing. And, you know, I say that with Spieth because if you watched him at his peak, mm-hmm. Jordan Spieth specifically, not Ricky in this case, yeah. he would walk up to a putt and just know it was going in. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and he lost that swagger for a couple of years and now mm-hmm. it's starting to come back. And I, th- I think it's the same thing for ricky i think it's just mental if he can clear whatever hurdles he's dealing with right now he'll probably turn it around yeah Yeah. it's a a challenge i mean we i mean 
in our little group that we play and we deal with that all the time. I mean, how many times we say each other, just swing, just swing, stop thinking. I mean, I'm way too mechanical, even when it comes to putting and just every aspect of my game, I feel like, but it is amazing to just finally stop and just, I just let it go. Yeah. So, and just let it stop trying to steer it. Yeah. You bring up his putting and you know, Ricky mm -hmm. always hit the back of the cup. Oh yeah, like when he very, puts, yeah. he puts firm, and it, you know you got to have confidence to do that. Mm-hmm. You lose that, and you hit the putt that hard. Whoop. Your score goes up by five strokes around. Yeah, because right. now yeah. you're four feet past every Start time. Start putting like Dave on twelve. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> my one putt I ran long <laughs> all day. They were either going in or coming up short. You're yeah. our Ricky Fowler, <laughs> except for I will <laughs> say I like the new putter on you. Yeah, yeah it, I thought it, it was great well today. Yeah, it did. Yeah. When you made that putt on one, I was like, "Whoa, yeah. here we go!" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's on. <laughs> Which is funny because yeah. I don't even think that was my best putt of the day. Really? Yeah, because my par putt on two, I thought was. Pretty big time. I mean, it was an eight footer, but it yeah, was downhill it was right putt. to left. And yeah. you needed it. Yeah. yeah. And then my birdie putt on 11, the uphill right to left swinger. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I That I thought was probably my best. Oh, that was day. a deep. That was deep, too. Yeah. That was 30, 35. Feet. Oh, this yeah. is starting yeah. to sound like a brag session. Yeah. I, I don't, <laughs> what do you think the podcast is for? <laughs> right. Come on. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> so no one listens to this. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just, no, it's I, just for us to listen to later. I can, <laughs> I can put bleed on, out with three putts. <laughs> I can put on three holes today. <laughs> <laughs> the, the rest of it was a little bit of a struggle. <laughs> I mean, hey, when the putters work it, you got to celebrate it. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I just, just, I just think it's a comparison to the fact that pro golf, amateur golf, whatever, it's about being confident in your game Boy, and knowing it. where you're going to to miss. Like, mm-hmm. like know your game, and I know we'll probably talk about this later. But you know, it's what's your go to shot or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think you know, for Ricky not making the cut, I think you're 100 percent right. It is a confidence thing, and I think that it it's amazing how that just shifts. I mean. Gosh, throughout the course of your day and your life, you walk around and you're, you're like, uh, you feel so confident. Your chest is puffed up. You're walking around and then something happens and you're yeah. like, oh, you slunch over you a little bit. You get that email. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but you just have to wonder if he's like, what if I don't have it anymore? Yeah. You know? Right. Oh, yeah. That's dangerous. That's That's, that's dangerous. a dangerous territory. Right I hope there. he's not in that. I hope not yeah. either, uh-huh. you yeah. know, because he's fun to watch. Yeah. You know? he's a, And he's good for golf. Yeah. He's, he's great. He always brings a huge that's gallery. A, yeah. Ambassador of golf. He's grown the game. I mean, you can't, you can't see say that he's done what tiger has done but in terms of reaching a new audience a young audience mm. there's probably no one else that has how done many little done. kids yeah. do they show wear an orange outfit yes yeah. With yeah a flat bill hat I he mean, was really the first and i might be wrong but to say that but i feel like for me he was really the first person other than tiger that you knew what he was going to wear on yeah, sunday absolutely and so you knew he was showing uh-huh. up in orange uh-huh. you knew it and it was just exactly right the yep. kids all started wearing it they all had their flat brim caps yep. on and you know, Great I know, for the game, and I think fantastic you know, for the we, game. We've talked about this before. Attire, he's yeah. like, let's modernize this a yeah. little bit, so right. make it professional, it's made but golf modernize fun. it. Yeah, yeah, he's made golf fun. And it should know, be fun. Yeah. It is fun. And I'm yeah. hoping that you know, I'm sure he will. He'll he'll make it back. He's too yeah. good of a golfer to not. Oh, 100 uh, percent. Yeah. It is weird to not see him in the playoffs, though. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Strange not Definitely to see that weird that name on the on the leaderboard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and that's a great segue, John, because the next topic. Yeah, you're good at this. I'm Gosh. You're we're, we're it's like, like a, we know what we're doing. We talked about it. Yeah. This is fantastic. <laughs> so speaking of possibly not seeing yeah. somebody somewhere, you yeah. know, there's a lot of talk right now about the Ryder Cup coming up. <gasps> we love the and, Ryder Cup. Uh, there's one specific golfer that keeps coming up mm-hmm. in, in discussions, and that's whether or not Steve Stricker should use his captain's pick on Phil Mickelson. 100%. I think yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's Why not? not the Ryder Cup without Phil there. Yeah. And I think I think it's Steve Stricker, do whatever the hell yeah. you want to do. If he feels like Phil can bring bring the heat, yeah. bring get him in there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Steve, if you're listening. Sit him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. He's totally listening. Yeah. I'll text him. I'll text him real quick. Hey Steve, how's it going? Love yeah. your putting stroke. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, no, I you know, honestly, that's that's an interesting thing because I feel like this does tie into maybe some of the Ricky Fowler stuff because gosh, what what would you do if you were Steve Stricker? And what would you go and sit down and talk to phil and be like hey man how do you absolutely feel? yeah yeah tell me what you think how's your how do you feel about your game right now are you confident in your game because i guarantee you at sycamore ridge if we were getting into something like this we would all like call each other and be like absolutely. are you feeling good about your game yeah you not feeling it? if we yeah. if we were going to go six like 
Back when we did the cup. Yeah. You're going to go six on six with somebody and somebody, like you knew somebody was always doing well, but now they're in a slump or something. Yeah. Nope. Not that Phil's Not in a slump. Them. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, you'd connect. But I think yeah. you should reach out to Phil. Phil's Phil's so good yeah. for situations like the Ryder Cup. And he's yeah. got so much experience. Won a major. Yeah. I know Dave yeah. was going to bring that up. He yeah, won a major this he's year. He's won a major, but he yeah. hasn't really done a whole lot outside of the major. You know, he's Except missed some cuts. Mm-hmm. And yeah. But he's still hitting bombs. Nasty bombs. Nasty yeah. bombs. Call them. <laughs> yes. I love Nasty that. bombs. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so I mean, my opinion... You know, I could go either way on this, but I think you guys are right. Like yeah. you hear all the stories, the legendary stories about Phil and his ping pong paddle. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just the things he does for yeah. the having the, the, the camaraderie. I have not heard so, these stories. Are you the serious? Ping pong paddle stories. Man, no. they laughed him out of the what building. What sort of secret fraternity are you guys in? No, no I'm joking. Oh, just reading Golf Digest. Oh. Uh, <laughs> what is that? Yeah. No. yeah. I mean, he, he showed up to the Ryder Cup with his own paddle and started challenging everybody. That's amazing. <laughs> and so, yeah. and I'm like, why is it in your right hand? Yeah. And yeah. I'm assuming with Phil, it's probably a big money Oh, oh God, sure. Situation, hundred percent. You know, in the clubhouse with the, the yeah. ping ten thousand dollar ping yeah. pong game. We're, yeah, I'm sure he's got like the top of the line Swedish model, absolutely ping pong paddle from Stiga. I think is the brand. I did not know that was a thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was into ping pong for. I a have a Stiga. Yeah. yeah. So. I have a nice paddle. Yeah. Yeah. And the <laughs> office champion. It's fine. Nice. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Humble but, brag, but like it's a it's a thing. And so yeah. he said, he's, you know, he came in, he was talking smack, he had it in a little case and Good everything, and then yeah, so. I have a case too. Yeah, yeah. You so just, keep that thing fresh, clean it. Right. Yeah, you got to buy some nice solution, keep the tackiness All up. Right. Oh yeah, you, you, say so. you don't walk in with some dirty old ping pong paddle and really? try to spin a shot. No. Now what if somebody walked in with a dirty ping pong paddle and took you to task? It would be embarrassing. See, mm-hmm. have you named your paddle? Don't do that, Greta. Oh, it's Greta. Yeah, I named mine Excalibur. Wow, because it's, it's a lot cooler. But yeah. Greta, yeah. it's like, come on, Greta. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I've learned a lot. Just about yeah, we're we're getting deep <laughs> into yeah. these things. Yeah. So I mean, and you know, the the good thing is, as the captain's pick, you know, he doesn't have to play in all the matches, right? No, so he can uh-huh. be there. Yeah. It's just the most. He can do it. He can play ping pong on right. the yeah. side yeah. all day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but I, I mean, Phil is hyper competitive. Yeah, yeah. hyper competitive. That and I think that's you what you want. Mono a mono with somebody. Yeah, he's going to give it everything he's got. Yeah, and you know you're going to have you're going to have guys that have never done it once or twice. I don't. know, Colin's probably. I don't know, he's not been on the Ryder Cup yet, right? He's not done President's so. Cup. No. So like, yeah. he's probably going to want to talk to somebody. And I mean, you got DJ. Yeah, he's been there a couple times, but really, just having Phil there. Yeah, experience. Yeah. Yeah. Just ask him questions and have him just pat you on the back until you're going to be fine. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. Of the uh, of the people who are close to going in, so Jordan Spieth, Harris English, uh, Patrick Reed, Daniel Berger, Patrick Cantlay, who do we not want to go? <laughs> well, we talked about this a little bit before we turned yes. the recording equipment on. And I'll go ahead and speak up the fact that I am not a Patrick Reed fan. I'm not either. But Miller's right. He is Damn good in that format. Yeah, and I totally agree. So put yeah. put my feelings aside. I'm going to have to park yep. my personal mm-hmm. and just say, you know, just let him wail on somebody. Uh, let him pick up his Captain America shield mm-hmm. and just go to town. That, the the one at, uh, was it uh, Hazeltine? Yeah. Is that yeah. Where him yeah. and uh, um, Rory McIlroy. Oh, that, that was awesome. That was one of the coolest things I've ever yeah. watched That was in golf. an awesome yeah. match. Yeah. It was yeah. It was like, even watching it on TV and being there, it just was like, yeah, I remember being at home and just like, like feeling the intensity. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like jumping off the yeah. couch. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, like Tom Cruise. He's, when they were making putts. <laughs> yeah, he's like the, the equivalent <laughs> to Ian Poulter for the European team. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. It's like he's automatically uh-huh. in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like he rubs a lot of people the wrong way, but in that format, Boy. he's hard to beat. Yeah, proof. And yeah. I will say, as as a former KC Cup captain, sometimes you do have to put aside your personal feelings, yes. right? <laughs> which is very similar to being in a Ryder Cup. Yeah, right. Yeah. It, it's, I mean, the pressure. <laughs> Does, yeah, is the yeah. money the that's time. on. <laughs> yeah, how the, people if they're on the team or yeah. off the team, exactly. identical. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> the pressure was. I crumbled under. Yeah. It. I'm not gonna lie. Stifling. Stifling. <laughs> I think we made the playoffs out of the pool play once <laughs> out of all the years. Yes, we so, did. But uh, you celebrated know, with a champagne yeah. shower. Darn it! I gave it my best. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you were a great captain. Yeah. So. Oh, my goodness. So I think we're in favor. Get Phil on the team. Yeah, let's yeah. put him in there. Kick Patrick Reed out. No, I'm joking. Uh, 
But what else we got? Birdies and bogeys. Bring us, bring us home on a final topic. Yeah. Here. So the last thing actually happened just down the road from us at uh, in Manhattan, Kansas, wow. my hometown, yeah, uh, Colbert Hills, uh, where I went to college. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Also, where I went to college. Oh, um, you did? Yeah. <laughs> sure enough, <laughs> I even have this really cool head cover on my driver. No and way. I think it looks Me just too. like yours. Wow. Isn't it called Willie? Yeah. Yes. yes. Willie yes. the Wildcat. There we go. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll insert photo. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so they had an all pro tour event out there and there was a, a player that was using a rangefinder, mm-hmm. and he never turned off the slope on his range finder wah, wah. And ended up being disqualified. So how do we feel a about professionals in any tour level using range finders? Mm. B, how do we feel about uh, the situation with that slope function? I, uh. I, th- I think it's, you know, there's no reason that he should have it on. First off, the rules are the rules. There's enough information out there that they can check whatever tour they're part of. You know, we have the amateur players tour here in Kansas City and, and well, it's across the nation. And there's plenty of information what you can and can't do. So I think it's inexcusable that he did have it on. I'm sure it was an accident. I'm sure it was an accident, didn't mean to or whatnot. But, and I don't know enough about the story. But to me, there's enough information out there that really accidentally doing it it's kind of like you probably clearly had a brain fart or something like that you might have you might have you might have been rushing to get to the first tee or or you know who knows what happened in his day ahead of time he had filled Mm -hmm. with gas had to stop and go to the bathroom it happens happens. happens. and (laughs) and and you you might have to you know you just get thrown off your game and you just forget to do something yeah so but i I don't know i have a little different opinion really let's do this let's go at it i think the technology if mm-hmm. it's accessible to everybody, just make it legal. I know it takes a while yeah. to get there. Yeah. But, I mean. And I like, agree with that, too. I, I, yeah. I look at this and I go, that's unfortunate, and he did break the rules, and you, you do have to pay for it. But let's just go ahead and say, if, you, if the rangefinders tell you the, you know, the difference, mm-hmm. if you've got a 10-foot drop from where you're at or not, right? just make it all legal. I mean. Well, and, it, and to me. I think I think this is a great point yeah. because even if your rangefinder, which mine does and Dave's does, tells you know how oh, it plays like this, yeah, still doesn't mean it plays like that for you. Exactly, it's not tailored yeah. to how you hit the shot. I mean, I so w- you still have to make the connection of yeah. okay, well, what's the wind doing? What's this? I do think it might be an, an advantage to you know know how much the drop is or whatnot but if everyone can do it why yeah. does why does it matter mm-hmm. so. yeah and it's different for every golfer you had a low trajectory shot or you had a high trajectory yeah. shot it's going to be different you still have to execute uh-huh. the shot absolutely yeah. so it's like eh. for me I, I i agree it didn't coincide with the rules so you got to pay the punishment mm-hmm. but i look at it as like let's just make this not an issue let's hold ourselves accountable and we're going to do a video about this we're going to play around with slope oh it will not change my score one bit exactly Uh -uh. and then the usga is going to come in and change everything because of our video because i mean (laughs) yeah that's it let's let's be some real change makers the truth of it is is somebody will give me the yardage and then they'll give me the slope yardage and i'm like okay okay whatever thanks like i just yeah if it's 198 or playing 194 Mm -hmm. i have to hit it at least 180 yards to get it on the green. That's what's right. in my brain. I'm like, okay, whatever. So How I, is it any different than knowing the, you know, the front of the green, yeah. and the back of the green, into the pin? Why? Well, I, I, yeah. I mean, you saying that makes me think of mm-hmm. like I do do a lot of thought when, you know, number two when I was trying to go for it in two. It's like, oh, it's a 196 You're yards to the for front your edge. Clear. Yes. Yeah, what am I what do I have to clear? get to get over that? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, eh, eh, I. I I'm not a big fan of having to DQ somebody for that, but I get right. it. It's the rules, but I think you have. I think you have to do it because I think you have to DQ them because it is the rules. Yeah, but at the absolutely. same time, I think change mm-hmm. it going forward. Yeah, yeah. I mean mm-hmm. that's a that's a harsh punishment for something that probably didn't impact his score. I wonder where he was from. You know, yeah, I'm not for sure. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't look that deep Florida. into the article. <laughs> he drove <laughs> drove all night. <laughs> yeah, he just drove to play Manhattan, Kansas. <laughs> did you say Florida man? Yes, I did. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, what was the what was the score there? What was the, what won that tournament? Do you recall? Uh, I don't. Okay, I don't recall. Right. I don't, yeah. what they I, shoot I, I don't even a, know what the All Pro Tour is. East of a golf course. Uh, I, I think it's one of the little feeder tours oh. to um, 
Corn Fairy. Corn Fairy. Or, okay. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, and, and you know, it, it was big in the news. And I, I'm kind of with John as far as the technology aspect. Yeah. Let them have it yeah. because you know the big initiative is pace of play. And if you give the pro the yardage right there on the number, mm-hmm. the only thing they have to figure out at that point is wind. Right. Yeah. And you know, and and those professional tournament rounds, five and a half, six hour rounds of golf, right? Right. Mm-hmm. And so if you can speed those up. And let yeah. people see, hey, they're yeah. using a rangefinder. That's how they're getting their yardage. Yeah, maybe that might help. I will say, I will say, playing Absolutely. with a wearable device is a little weird, though. Like in the tournaments, compared to like playing in high school and then uh, some amateur tours and stuff like that, it was weird this last time playing in that and being. I I I never turned my watch on. Yeah, you feel like you're yeah. breaking the rules. Yeah, yeah, I did. Huh. Yeah, but I guess if you if you can wear it as long as it's not, I, there's more to it. But I rem- the one of the things that I remember that stuck it to me is it can't suggest what club you should hit so it can't tell you what to okay. to hit so interesting some of the devices do that and so that i, th- I thought that was interesting yeah. too yeah. so hmm. kind of a yeah. little nugget there i'm probably 100 percent wrong and someone's going to comment on the site or on youtube that's great yeah tell us we're wrong help <laughs> help <laughs> us please yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> Fantastic. nice Let's well, move in. Let's yeah. move into the meat and potatoes of this episode. Let's move into bring it. Us home, bring us home. Hungry. Bring us home. Why do I say bring us home? home. Yeah. Get us going, Dave. Yeah, not, what are we? We're not going home. We're, we're yeah. still leaving. We're the still here. <laughs> we're never. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. We just backed out of the yeah, garage. Exactly. <laughs> We've got everything packed. <laughs> yeah. Everyone, we need to get in the car, but we still got to get gas. Yeah. So yeah. And then John's got to stop for the restroom you at the gas it. station. Yeah. You know before it. Before we hit the road. <laughs> We're not stopping again. Yeah. Like a 30-minute drive. A 30-minute exactly. drive, that's that's not doable. Yeah. So, again, no, this is another great again. segue because uh, the topic is driving on the range. Oh. So. That is a miraculous segue. Yeah. Go us. <laughs> driving fantastic. on the range. Yeah. 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 So, the last couple of times we were together, uh, you guys had brought up the driving range and how it's different from the course. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I thought it would be fun to dig into the driving range itself. Oh, I love it. So, uh, you know, John has said on numerous occasions that you're just hitting into a big field. Yep. So, uh, and then also later on, you ended up saying, we need to go to the driving range and practice. Yeah, so. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I want to hit into a big field. Yeah. yeah. I can and feel hit good that. about myself and that. have confidence so uh-huh. I can go be on the tour. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So let's, let's go through what you guys do as far as practice on the driving range. Mm. Like, mm. How, how do you practice on the range? All right. Well, I will jump in and, and lead us off. Uh, this morning, I wanted to hit long iron solid. That was my goal. I was like, if I can go out, it's what we teed off at six or seven forty or something like that. Pretty early, pretty early. So you got to break stuff loose. You got to get out. And but I always figure if I can hit a four iron, then my round's going to be okay. Eh, Maybe it wasn't, but um, so what I did with the range is I took a gap wedge and a four iron down to the hitting area. Yeah, that was it. That's all I took, Mm -hmm. and I hit the wedge to a green that was about ninety yards away until I felt like I was hitting that solid and then just made the transition, just pulled the fire iron out. And there was a blue pin was like 190 out. Mm-hmm. I said, I'm just going to hit draws at the blue pin. Hmm. And the first four did none of that. <laughs> like it was, it was like, what, what am I doing? Yeah. But you know, like what I say about hitting into a field, if you hit those four shots on the golf course, you're going to kick yourself in the butt. Oh yeah. You're going to say, well, those are horrible shots. You didn't want the range. You don't have a target. You go, eh, I just kind of mishit it. I'm sure it'll get better. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I deliberately worked on swing plane, contact, and following through. Those were the three things that I knew if I had a long iron in my hand, I could help mm. with. Like, don't steer it. Just swing it. Mm. And uh, by the end, I was flushing it. And I really didn't hit the ball that bad today other than my 20-yard, 80-yard shot. It's a good one. But... um like that that's what I worked on. As I looked at the pin, it's like that's my target. I know my ball flight. I know what I want this to feel like. Mm-hmm. And I worked on that shot over and over again. Do you feel like that was cause I, I feel like I would answer this question in two ways. How I how I warm up before a round. Yeah. And then if I'm just going to go to the range. And practice. And practice. Yes. We're talking about practice. Yes. I, <laughs> I, I did like, I would call it four warm-up shots, and the okay. rest was practice. Gotcha. I was just, okay. I was trying to hit a target. Gotcha. Do you yeah. ever go to the range and just practice? Do you ever just go out and beat a bucket? No. Why I don't. not? Uh, I don't know. I just feel like I always have to aim at something. I always have to imagine the trajectory in the ball flight, and I always have to gauge 
the shot against what I wanted to hit. Mm. So like everything, when it comes to me in the range, everything's practical and objective. I try to keep it that way. You're a, I mean, you're a feel player. I'm a feel I mean, player. Yeah. 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 So like, you know, I, I might, my first four or five shots are me just breaking stuff loose. After yeah. that, it is all goal oriented. So, hmm. and, and so you do all of your work then out on the course. Yes, I do a lot of work on the course. If I ever you know, can't do it anymore because it's too busy, but when I would golf by myself after work, <laughs> I would hit five or six shots out of every fairway. That yeah. was my practice because I'm I think on the is, course. Yeah. I can see it. I can yeah. understand what needs to be worked on. I can see rollout. I can see trajectories differently because mm-hmm. our range, you know, it, it goes downhill. So everything looks like it flies higher. Yeah. You get on the course and you're like, that's a little flatter. Well, you're on a flat course. You're not hitting down a hill. So yeah. that, that's how I approach the range. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, it's not really warm up. It's really like once I've hit four or five shots, I'm hitting at a target. I've got a trajectory. I've got a window. I see the ball going through mm. and I try to repeat it every time. Interesting. Yep. I don't see that window. But you don't. I'd, I'd, I've, I have tried to move away from not necessarily how you're saying you do yeah. it, but I've tried to move away specifically from we're going to get up, we're going to go play, we've got tee times at 748 or whatnot. Yeah. I have really moved into the thought process of just get my body warmed up. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. because I feel like the mechanics are already there. Yeah. But sometimes I would show up to a round and I'd be like, oh, okay, I want to hit this shot. And I'd be on the range and the confidence would just go yeah. down because I couldn't hit the shot I wanted to hit. So I've really this year, uh, and whether it's helped me or not, is just come out and just start swinging. Yeah. And I take, I yeah. take, I take a gap wedge mm-hmm. and I take a six iron Yeah, and I, t- I choose six iron because, and I could be wrong, but it's the middle of the, yeah. the set. It's not a short iron. It's not a long iron. Yeah. And so I take that now to, to your point is you took a four iron and I think it's interesting, but like Tom Watson always talked about if he would take, and he might still talk about this, but he would take a three iron and if he could hit a three iron grade on the range, he knew he was going to have, have a good round. That, yes. That's the same yeah. reason I do it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I always figure if I can, if I can start to flush a long iron, mm-hmm. then we're going to be okay. But I, I think there's a little challenge there. Cause I feel like I do have the same swing across all my clubs but at the same time. They're still different yeah. with the length of the club mm-hmm. and, and everything, the shafts. Yeah. I mean, cause I've um, never gone out and done like wedge eight, six, four, no hybrid driver like and then go out and do gap wedge nine seven i know guys that no. do that yeah and they move down through their whole set you're sitting next to one. yeah yeah and i, I think <laughs> never there's, i think that. there's value in that too because then you have familiarized yourself with all the links and the loss but there's a time and a place uh, to me there's a time and a place for that that's not before you go play it's yeah. it's a, an evening but i'm i'm with john i benefit more from i think there's the range sorry the range is to work on those mechanics but I like to go out on the course and see it in real time. And yeah. that gives me the ability to hone it a little yeah, bit more you as I feedback. feel. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of like what you feel like, I don't get the, you know, the greens are all different on the range. The, the greens are all over the place, but I just don't feel like I'm hitting at a green when I'm out there. Yeah. I mean, the shape is there, everything is there, but the response of the ball when it hits it, doesn't do anything yeah. like I, I like I, for me if I'm going to go hit wedges I would never do this but I would want to go out on the golf course and, and hit wedges into a real I green have never done that yeah <laughs> like so, dumped your golf bag of golf balls yeah, out and just yeah. said I yeah. apologize I, why I, I would never do fix all the yeah. pitch marks plus 10 more but I think it's important to say why like yeah. like I wouldn't do that because of the reason of it's just you would damage the course you and do damage the yeah course. and you don't want to do that because you're going to stand in the same place and the you're gonna hit the same that you two take yeah, yeah. you're gonna I mean, massive divots. but the good news yeah. is when you take a divot like what i take oh the whole thing so goes good. right back in it's <laughs> yeah, just, it does it's sodding I mean, I've, gone, the sod I've gone back the sod back yeah and i've gone back and looked mm-hmm. at every single one of my divots across my entire golfing career yeah. and all of them have grown in perfectly yeah and not yeah. to <laughs> not not to focus in on this but sometimes <laughs> when i have not gone out to the course and hit 20 <laughs> wedges into a green i have also we will be going to you I when you were talking about this also all the time. <laughs> not filled the cooler up with water and watered the divots back in. Like mm. I take total care, but I agree. I, I, I'm not going to trust a range ball landing on the no. fescue fairway. Well, range balls at range balls aren't, uh, you know, for, for me, you know, I, I, I don't know. I'm not saying they go less distance, but 
they aren't perfect by no, any they means. They fly so, higher. They yes. they yeah. don't they don't. You can't send a wedge out. They're with a meant range for ball. durability. Yeah. They're meant to, hit, to uh-huh. hit, be hit. I don't 10 even know. Billion ten, times. Yes, yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so, how that responds on the golf course, I'm with you. I think practicing to get your shot or feel more confident requires going out on the course and hitting multiple shots from the same position. Yep. And and I think I think it it just does more wonders for yeah. me. Of, I, I am interested in hearing your. W- range routine but i will say one thing about oh like dave's this here morning. okay dave right. is here okay but mm-hmm. this morning when i was out doing that mm-hmm. the ball wasn't drawing as much as i thought it would interesting and the ball didn't draw as much as i thought it would when i was on the course so like that type of practice gave me the ability to after two holes where mm-hmm. i was expecting a draw and it still didn't show up to just go oh, i'm not gonna aim that far right yeah and it did help okay yeah so like so you think you you realize what you were taking to the course yeah that day mm-hmm. wow. yeah because you know sometimes you show up and you hit a fade and you're like what the what is that i never yeah. do that yeah. and then you hit a fade all day and yeah. you know it, it, to me it kind of illustrated what i might run into i've so. never hit a fade all day <laughs> i have and it's <laughs> yeah. a lot of fun i hit a fade Especially on, when you hit a lot of draws i hit a fade on uh three today yeah money about the same distance as Dave's three wood. It's He's, a four iron. He said it was a fade, but it's like a three yard draw. It was a three yard draw, which <laughs> a, is a fade a bit, for a me. Fade. Yeah, that's a, a fade, fade for me. That's yeah. a fade for me. Yeah. So, so Billy, you said a lot of words, but you didn't really say what your uh, <laughs> what your routine is, like how you're warming up. You say that oh. you, you do more to okay, try so, to warm up for that. Yeah, and then, that's a great. And, that's a great. Yeah. So, so I take I take the gap wedge, like I said, and six iron down there, and I literally I, I have no rhyme or reason. I pick out a green that looks about gap wedge distance away and I hit at it and and I just get the juices flowing I get the body moving loosen up I one thing I would like to do that I don't do today is do some dynamic stretching ahead of time or something like warm the body up just a little bit because I feel like you get out there and you're just like you're trying to like the first 10 shots I topped like four or five shots on the range can you please warm up like Miguel Oh, 100 percent. I'll yeah, set that up would some be cones exactly. for you to run. Yeah. So awesome. <laughs> fast feet, fast feet, fast feet. Um, but no, I, so I hit I probably hit anywhere from ten to twelve gap wedges. And then once I feel good with the gap wedge, move like I'm, uh, I'm I've warmed my body up. I'm starting to put a good move on the ball. I'll go to a six iron. I'll hit some six irons. And I feel like if I'm hitting the six iron good, I know what's going to happen with my longer clubs, yeah. my driver or, or whatnot. And sometimes I'll hit a few. I'll typically once I've done this routine, I'm if I have my driver down there with me, I'll hit like one or two drives and just boop and go. Yeah, I hardly ever hit driver on the range. I don't do it very often. I will do it um, prior to like a, a round that means something that is maybe more competitive a competitive sure. round like i'd like to know what i'm taking to the first hole yeah. what's gonna what's gonna happen when i pull this driver yeah. out so it's gonna be fun but i don't do like to to like uh, what the pros do <coughs> excuse me where they where they kind of hit 10 wedges or something and they kind of progressively get to where they hit drivers but they don't hit all their clubs yeah i feel like i could bring some of that into my warm up routine but still i'm really trying not to be mechanical on my warm up. I'm just literally trying to be like, okay, sure. what how does my body feel right now? Because I feel like I know my swing and I can get to my swing on the on the golf course. Yeah. So, I don't feel like I have to find my swing on the range anymore, but that's a change mm-hmm. in how I did it years prior. Years prior I'd show up and be like, "Okay, you've got to hit a 10-yard draw today." And I'd be starting and if I couldn't do it, I'd be frustrated. Well, then you take that frustration yeah. to the golf course and you don't play well. Work. Nope. Mm-mm. So I, I try to eliminate that mechanical side of it now. But I want to go practice in the evenings or early in the mornings and be like, okay, I'm going to the range. I'm going to hit 10 shots with every club and see what's yeah. happening, get the feel, but then just be very mechanical. But then when I go to the golf course, try to be free. Yeah. Yeah. Just so, swing. So so talk about then your, your practice on the range. You, mm-hmm. you said 
Yeah, ten shots with every club. That's a lot of swing. That's a lot. That's a, <laughs> yeah. that's for somebody that's swings, 140, right? well, 140. I, I hit you, ten shots you with hit my 10 putter. putters. Yeah. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It works. Yeah, exactly. So I like to hit my putter 65 yeah. with a fade. 200 yards. Uh, so do yeah. you have a plan when you go out to actually practice on no. that mechanical part? No. Really? Not at all. Really? And I think that's just where my game is at this year. Okay. You know, it being, I was a 1.9 last year. I'm a 2.4 this year. It's probably more time dedication than anything so so if i were to go do that i would probably be more mechanical on positioning of the club tried i would bring video i would want to watch where i'm at and i'd want to i'm very steep as i come into the ball to where the angle of my club is almost vertical at 90 degrees perpendicular to the ground yeah and i would like to shallow that and so i i would want to see that as I'm hitting shots through every club. So I would want to just make some swings, feel, feel what I'm doing and then try to hit shots. Sure. So, so I do, if I'm, if I'm doing a practice session, I will, I will hit shots, but then I will step back and take three to four practice swings and just get the feeling of how I want to feel during this swing. Yeah. The hardest part for me has been for the last five years is the, the, um, hitch in my swing where I have a hard time starting my swing. And so that Mm. took, that's why I don't have a great practice routine on the golf course or on the driving range is because of that, because I would go to the range and I'd be like, okay, come on, let's just get past not being able to start your swing. So now that I'm past, really? yeah, now that I'm past, know this was a thing. Oh yeah. This was a huge mental thing. Oh, yeah. So it all, I'll tell the story. So I had a buddy that asked me, I cocked my head to the side yeah. and he asked me, he goes, why do you do that? And I go, I don't know. I didn't know I did that. And so then bound and determined, I'm not going to turn my head. Oh, good Lord. Yeah. yeah. So that sent me down a road. Then I, I would, cause I would sit there at the range and I would go, don't turn your head, don't turn your head. And I couldn't start my swing. Well, then I would tell myself, don't start your swing till you keep your head straight. That led to, I can't start my swing. For real? Yes. Wow. So you, you can ask people at Sycamore, they've, they've experienced, I would just be like locked up and wouldn't be able to turn at all. Oh, so wow. I, yeah. And that's something I think I would really like to dig into mm-hmm. like on the, the next episode. Yeah. The mental and, side of golf. Yeah, the yeah. mental side. Is that because, what you wanted me to get to? No, that's not at all. <laughs> We're going to have a breakthrough. Yeah. But I think that's yeah. great because yeah. I think it leads into the, the, the next thing that I think we should talk about on the next episode is that mental game because I've had issues in the past that poor John had to experience in a tournament. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but yeah, I'd love to travel down that road because I think it would be help people. But one thing that you said that you want to do or like to do mm-hmm is record yourself. Yeah. And I I think that's great. And I think you being a former pro Mm -hmm. and and having friends that can look at your swing and help you with that Mm -hmm. is great. What about the average person that's listening to this and and doesn't really know much about the golf swing? Does it benefit them to record their swing? And then what are they looking at if they do? It's not, it's, it, it can be beneficial to see certain fundamentals of your swing stance set up where your hands are and stuff like that. But if you are an amateur golfer that doesn't know anything about the swing, recording your swing and looking at it will do nothing for Even you. Even right? then I, yeah. I, mm-hmm. I don't want to watch my swing. Really? I, I, I can spot 20 things wrong with my swing when I look well, at but, it. And I, and I mean, yeah, bad no. grip club face shut. Yeah. Everything's so bad. I think you and have I've to just, have, I, you, no, like, go ahead. I don't want to look at it. Yeah. I just, it, as long as it's working, yeah, you know. I mean, See, but I think I I, w- I agree with what you're saying because you could you could you know paralysis by analysis. Yeah, you could you could totally it's really go slippery over. slope. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I think I think for you know if you can be smart about it and say I just want to know where my hands are. Yeah. in my position when I'm setting up, snap a picture, yeah. set your phone yeah, up and snap absolutely. a picture. Get r- validate what you're doing or not doing, yeah. and then move your hands because. I mean, there's tons of times where Dave or you are sitting there and, and you turn around and go, your hands are so far back. And yeah. it's like, oh, really? Put your hands forward. Then you feel like your hands are like touching the driving range yeah. because they're so freaking far forward, but they're they're in the right position. So yeah. I I agree that you can be we're, over, you can over and analyze your you own know. swing. But for me, I have, I think it's a difference between a, a, a good golfer and a, and a, 
not trying to be mean, but a bad golfer. Well, you and, know, it's somebody at different stages. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And when yeah. you're in your 20, 25 handicap, and I mean, I'm like three or four handicap, three yeah. something. Mm-hmm. And um, the thing is, when I look at my swing, mm-hmm. I know what I need to change, but it's also like anybody that's remodeled a house, <laughs> you know, you're like, oh, new cupboards. Oh, shit. I got to put new floors oh, in. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. now I got to do yeah. this. Now the carpet in the living room looks yeah. terrible. Now I need to repaint. Now it I need cascades. To do this. Yeah, because you can yeah. fix one thing, and now that. Then now your other quirk yep. is not working because the quirk you just fixed that fixed the other quirk mm-hmm. is now it's not supported. So yeah, now, but you know, I could argue with that if you could say that about your game because yeah, because if, if you start to hit better shots and you're closer to yeah. your proximity to the hole increases yeah. and you're and you're not working on your putting, you're still going to shoot the same score. Yeah, my recommendation yeah. if you are going to record, mm-hmm. consider watching it with a pro. Yes, like absolutely. Absolutely. I, and that's what that's what I was yeah. getting at. Is yeah. like don't if you do record your swing, don't don't try to analyze it yourself. There's yes, there are tons of stuff yeah. on YouTube, and yes, there are some people who really do know what they're talking about. But yeah. there's also people that don't. Yeah, and uh, get with a trusted pro. Sit down. Yeah, say yeah. I want to record it. I want you to tell me two or three things yeah. to work on, and that's what I'll work on. There are apps. because because like I I still figure I I put it in the in the same analogy of working on a house. Mm-hmm. You know, I redo my kitchen. I'm going to cut through a floor joist, water pipes. I'm going to electrocute myself. <laughs> and the whole thing's going to be worse when it's all said and done. My house was supposed burned. to be here on yeah. Saturday. He's well, dead in his kitchen is. because yeah. he tried to remodel. Exactly. So like, no one's heard from John. Yeah. If yeah. I'm going to remodel, I'm going to ask somebody that knows remodeling to say, what two things can I do right. to make this house better? And that's, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Like, don't, don't self-diagnose. Yeah. Yes, I think you can if you know enough about the swing to be uh-huh. dangerous. If you can understand. Or, you know, there are people who are, have great minds and they can, they can go in and read stuff they sure, could they could absolutely. they could figure out the fundamental biomechanics and they could understand what they're doing just define what you're trying to do i yes. think it don't so i think there's a wealth of knowledge in finding and looking at your swing yes you could focus on one thing yeah you focus know, on i one want thing. i want my setup to be really good okay great foundation i want my grip to be yeah. really good okay what does my grip look like when i'm uh-huh. i'm looking at myself or or taking a video of myself it's only going to either validate or tell you to, that you need to change it. Yeah. So I, mm-hmm. I think it's great, but I too, I do acknowledge it's that dangerous, you could, it's oof. dangerous territory if you don't know what you're getting yourself yeah. into. Well, I mean that, yeah. yeah, you, I, there's so many people that no. I, I think, I think, but more detrimental is to not know what you're doing and yeah. go look on the online, read something and think that that's what you're doing and then oh, change something. Feel and, then, and, oh, feel and reality is nowhere close. So different. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what I think. Close. It's really like trust and verify. So yeah. like trust that you're swinging well, but then verify it with some other mechanism. Yep. I think it's good to have a buddy come over and or you know a girl come over or your friend come over and, and, and look at you. But at the same time, very hard to describe a, a golf swing yeah. of where you're at and and it, when you can say like if i record it and dave or you were to come over and talk through it there would be no confusion yeah you know, i'd be like okay this is where you need to be and this is where you don't need to be and stuff like you that really so, need dave for that yeah, yeah. dave's good so yeah. sometimes I, I just yeah. didn't want our tens of listeners to go out to the yeah. range. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> Are you saying double digits? Yeah. Careful. No. Yeah, I'm assuming at least, right? Yeah. I mean, so at least we listen to eight ourselves. And a half. No. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I didn't want them all going out oh, there and setting up their phones yeah. and be like, you guys well, Billy listen? Said, uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Billy says, I need to record my swing. Right. You right. Know? Th- there are some things I will say this. If you are going to record your swing, understand where you need to have the camera. And a lot of times, uh, and I'm probably going to get slapped for saying this, but I believe the best thing is from when you're doing down the line, which be behind you and you could see the ball fly away, hand height. So yeah. when you're in your stance where your hands are at address, and the same thing if you're looking just uh, forward, towards yourself and just want to see how your swing looks uh same thing hands yeah, forward the camera and then yeah. also try to get uh high enough frames per second so that you can see the stages 30 frames per second is not enough yeah 60 or more it's 60 yeah. or more even go up into the 120 or one or 240 record it in slow-mo so you can see all those progressive steps because a lot of times what you're going to do is you're going to you know you're going to see here's where i am here and then the next frame it's you're almost at impact or your past impact. And there's so much information there that you could see. So yeah. high enough frame rate and then uh, position yeah. is the other thing. And if somebody does record their swing and you get home and you look at it and you go, what is this? 
just delete it and yeah. just call a pro and yeah. be like, there's, I got to work on stuff. You tell yeah. me what to work on. Cause I'll, I'll tell you that's, <laughs> that's me. If I, if I record my swing thing, I'm gonna look at it. It's just like, where, where do I start? Oh man. I love yeah. watching it. Look at really? my swing. Oh, I oh, can't I love stand it. it. Yeah. I, really? I, I, can't I always it. end up looking like, gosh, I'm fat. Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't even end up looking at my swing. Yeah. I just look at my belly. Like, dang. Yeah. So yeah, it's a self-esteem issue, but <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, we won't get into that. But yeah, you know, just not yet. Right. Yeah. Wait, was that episode? What? What yeah. episode is that? <laughs> further down the line, we'll, we'll go into self-esteem. Sounds down like the something. Twenty twenty-three. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. We'll put that one off for a little while. But yeah. I mean, you know, I, I don't. I don't think until we had messed around with the camera a little bit that I hadn't seen my own swing for mm-hmm. years. Yeah. And uh, it was a little bit of a revelation for me because... Um, so this is why you're playing better golf. Maybe. You got to yeah, see I your mean, swing. I, maybe. There's value yeah. in it. No, see? Well, I mean, that was after I had already made all the changes that we had discussed in the spring that mm-hmm. I had been working on. Um, but, you know, I, the, the only time I've ever used video was to help a friend with his swing. Mm-hmm. You know, his issue was, and it's kind of like Bobby's, where in his backswing, he was really trying to get his left shoulder down. down, mm-hmm. And in the process, he was really pulling himself away from the ball. And, and I was just trying to show him, you know, you don't have to do that. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I showed him a video of who I think has the best swing in all of golf, Adam Scott. Yeah. Mm. And I said, watch his head, watch his shoulders see how much it moves. He goes, it didn't move. I go, exactly. Yeah. So why is yours moving? So why much? are you trying to do this? It's not right. the right move to make. Yeah. yeah. Now so I'm, does Adam Scott have a big tummy? No, no, no. It didn't help with the self-esteem issues. <laughs> yeah. He, he's also what, half a foot taller than me too. <laughs> At least <laughs> six to eight inches taller. Uh, anyhow. Interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, if, if you know what you're looking at, to your point, mm-hmm. or if you have yeah. a professional that can look at it with you, then, yeah. then I absolutely do think the video uh, is helpful. Absolutely. I, but, I won't yeah. disagree with that. Yeah. I yeah. won't disagree with that, but you got to go into it with the right perspective. Exactly. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. You have to know what you're trying to improve. Yeah. yeah. And, and I guess, so that, I guess it comes to me then as far as how I work on the range. Cause mm-hmm. John yeah. did say he wanted to know that. I, would I love did. To know that. I did change my warm up routine similar to what Billy is talking about. For me, uh, it used to be, I would go out there and just start pounding balls and be like, Ugh, I hit that ball like crap. I'm just right. Gonna, I'm going to uh, play terrible. Yeah, I, I really don't. Uh, to to yeah. go back to what I said, I I'm really not worried about the outcome. Right. I'm literally just trying to get my body to warm exactly. up. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I and I've changed that. And mm-hmm. I I've actually found something in the last couple of weeks that seems like it really works for me. Um, because my my warm up sessions would always be go out there and try to hit the ball the best that I possibly could. And then I would hit the new club that I brought out that week <laughs> mm-hmm. just to see if I liked it or not. I'm that last part is still there. The last part is still there. But basically I just go out there, I bring the gap wedge and then I alternate seven or eight iron. So I don't wear one or the other out. Um, oh my gosh. And then, <laughs> Honestly, I'm with you on that. Yeah. yeah oh I'm totally with gosh. you on that. And then, no. <laughs> and then uh, I bring out the clubs that I think I'm going to be hitting off the tee the most. So today it was oh, the driving iron idea. and the driver. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's the three wood that mm-hmm. I bring out there. And so I just go out there. The first thing I swing is the gap wedge, half a swing, just try to knock the rust off and, and get moving. And then as soon as I feel like I'm moving okay, then I'll move into the seven iron. And then once I'm feeling even better, I'll go into the, the slightly longer club. Mm-hmm. And then I just go full Bryson and just let the driver rip. I don't yeah. care if it goes straight. It doesn't matter. Yeah. At that point, I'm working up a sweat. Like yeah. I'm going to hit five or six balls right. in a row. Just, Blood flowing. I'm I think, I think there's all a, out with the driver at that point. Right. I, think that, I think you get some endorphin stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I think you get a release yeah. too, yeah. like swinging that driver. Like not like crazy, but I do think – Cause I feel like there's been some times where I've been on the range and I'm hitting and I'm just hitting really crappy shots. I pull the driver out and I hit as hard as I possibly can. And then all yeah. of a sudden I'm hitting great shots. Yeah. Really? Well, you yeah. know, cause I had a, John, I John's going to try that. Do that. Yeah. I really never. Oh man. That. Yeah. It's I like, a, get it out of the way. Just be like, oh, really? and then it's like, great. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. I had a buddy, he, he used to be an assistant pro uh, at a course. I was on the range and I shanked like five balls in a row mm-hmm. and it started affecting me. Big time. That'll do it. And he says, get out your driver. And I go, what? He says, get out your driver. I said, okay. Pounded like five or six drivers. He goes, now hit your iron again. And it was fine, fine. after that. Yeah. So th- there's something to it. Cause, yeah. yeah. You know. But yeah, I just try to go full Bryson and just 
destroy it. And I try to get that warm up done in like 10 minutes. Yeah. Just get it done quick and then go BS and putt, mm-hmm. huh. <laughs> you know, have fun. Yeah, at I that don't point. Th- I, I mean, it would be interesting, you know, when Tiger Woods comes on and Phil Mickelson comes on the podcast to yeah, talk yeah. to them about this. Cause yeah. I, I wonder if they think about their shots or they're just warming up their body or not. Phil, Phil was on the range at Augusta. He was hitting at targets. Yeah. I, I think mean, he hit the targets. He was now, hitting at targets 500 yards away. Yeah. yeah. There. yeah. But, but I think I mean, there's a difference between them and us. Yeah, but like but they, you know, yeah. I think Bones was still his caddy, but they were, you know, he was out there moving his hand. He's like this, this. Mm-hmm. And Phil would hit and he's like this, this. Like he was trying to get him to go uh, left or right. And mm. it was fun to watch. I mean, but yeah, they were out trying. I mean, he was moving it back toward a pin. You could definitely tell because it's landing within 20 yards of the pin every time. Maybe we should have hood. caddies. Maybe we should get caddies. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Well, I, we can definitely afford it. Yeah. Yeah. That was <laughs> the not. from our just podcast. Per, right? Just private caddies. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Uh, you know, how my warm up differs from, from when I'm actually working. I've done a lot of range work this year and I've, mm-hmm. I've tried to get my son, I talked about him several times. To, to just understand what he's trying to do on the range. Right. And, and for me, my range practice sessions go in phases. And so, um, and, and one of the things I do with my, my daughter, she's a pitcher in fast pitch softball. There, the warm up is different phases. It, there's like a basically partial throw, then a little bit more of the throw, then more of the throw, and then the full wind up. And so what I'm trying to do with my swing when I'm practicing is I go out there and the first thing I'm trying to do is just hit shots consistently. And if I'm not hitting shots consistently, I won't leave that part of the practice portion until I am. Whether right. that takes 75 yeah. balls in the in the large size bucket or it takes 20. Hmm. If it doesn't take a long time, then I'll move into the next step, which is my alignment that I struggle with all the time. And I really try to focus on getting the alignment down. And um, once I feel like I've done a satisfactory job in that, then it's fun time. Yeah. And so I haven't gotten to fun time too often this year, but I've gotten there a couple times. And my original goal this year was I was going to start working the ball right to left, left to right on command. And that's what fun time has been. Uh huh. So I, I finally got to the point where I could try, you know, hey, let's try to hit my three wood with a small cut, which I tried today on number three, which you so humbly talk about your four. Validated that it goes as far as my four iron. Yes. Mm-hmm. With a cut. With a cut. Mm-hmm. Cut spin. but it was in play uh, rather than how it has been on several occasions on that hole Mm because that hole vexes me anyhow um, and then after fun time it's try out new equipment time (laughs) because there's always try out new equipment time what did Dave buy yeah Yeah. (laughs) exactly so that that's how my practice sessions go and that's how it's different from my warm ups on the range I used to take the warm ups way too seriously like I was the guy that would get the medium bucket and go out and pound all 50 balls guess I'm going to suck today yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and now it's like, give me the small bucket, and I don't care if I hit all 25 balls or not. Yeah. I'm just going to go out there and get loose. Get my body then, going. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then just go out and have some fun. Yeah. So, and, and it's 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 helped me, I think, just not going out there already negative. Yeah, so, that 100%, helps. 100%. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So. I would um, like to, we should track that stat of, like, we're positive, we hit great shots off the first hole. We're negative. We hit crappy shots. Golf, <laughs> golf with a mood ring on. Yeah. Oh man, yes. it's orange. Yes. Look out! Here comes a shank. We are totally doing this. Yeah. Video. I'm buying mood rings. <laughs> yes, <for> exactly. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're in a shitty mood. Okay. Yeah. Are we even going to be able to like wear a real ring? And pull yeah. The golf club at the yeah. same time. I don't know. Yeah. I don't wear mine. We'll have to I wear play. like one of those uh, stick-on thermometer yeah. things on your forehead. Say, I, so I don't wear a club, so <laughs> wearing a ring would be even weird. We should get right heart. Now. Should measure our heart rates. They did that with. Wow. Yes. Yeah, that was they awesome. Did, they used to do it on. Uh, uh, it was a Canadian tour. Yeah, uh, they, and you would watch it, and they were their pulse would be up on the screen. It was pretty yeah. cool to watch. Yeah. They don't do it anymore. Rory walked yeah. up this giant hill to get to his ball. No, it got to like ninety-one beats a minute. I'm like, God, he's healthy. Yeah. Son of a gun. Jerk. That's what I am. Like, that's what I am walking like, downstairs. Like, like, like yeah. he's not going to lay down and take a nap. What a loser. Right. <laughs> exactly. It makes me think of when Phil slid down the hill on the, it, was that at the open I, when he slid? I, I think so. I think yeah. he slid down the hill at the open. Yeah. Like he s- sat on a towel and was like, <laughs> yeah. It's like, that's efficient. Yeah. You gotta yeah. do what you gotta uh-huh. do. Yeah. All right. Well, should okay. we move on then? Yeah, let's get on to yeah. this. So, so we've done all of our practice, right? Yeah. And uh, Billy needs a refill, so yeah. we're gonna get that taken care of. Yeah. So uh, while we're refilling, I'll I'll introduce the next part of this. John says he he does this out on the course. 
Um, oh, yes. I work on this on the range actually, and, and sometimes on the course. But uh, you know, say you absolutely have to make a shot. Doesn't matter whether it's off the tee or in the fairway, whatever. <laughs> what is your go-to shot? What is the shot that you are most comfortable hitting when you need to hit a shot? I'm excited about this topic. This is a great topic. Yeah, because in in I think there's a couple things here. At least for me is. My go-to shot is probably a miss, and and uh, like I hit low hooks and can or pull hooks. Yeah, that can be my go-to shot. Just don't even think, Billy. Just step up and hit the ball. <laughs> pull hook. Yep. Yeah. Money. <laughs> yes. Aim forty yards right. <laughs> yes. It's gonna be money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Maybe go down a few clubs, <laughs> and we're gonna right there. Now the where it goes and stuff that might be like I need to figure out exactly how far that draw is or that pole is but because my, my thought of a go-to shot is the shot that i mean maybe it's always off the tee maybe it's always an approach but mm-hmm. it's the shot that you know you can trust and you don't mess up frequently i think like it's that's it, what i call a go-to shot and i think for yeah and for me truly like in, in that definition for me i would go i want to get to a certain yardage yeah i want to get if i can have my 60 degree wedge in my hand from 90 to 105 yards i feel very confident yeah that i will at least be in a reg- a reasonable amount of distance from the hole on the green maybe not yeah. two or three feet but to where i'm giving myself a very good chance at making a birdie putt and i feel like i did that today a lot of times i was hitting wedge i had a really a lot of good looks at birdie putt i didn't make any of them but yeah. uh it, i do feel like for me it's a 60 degree wedge from 100 and 405 yards is where I feel okay. very comfortable. So. All right. What about Miller? What about- uh, mine's a pretty similar shot. Uh, I like to be 95 to 105 yards, but for me, it's a three quarter gap wedge because I'm not as strong. Yeah, no kidding. 104, six yeah. long Good. limbs. Crazy. And yeah. it's funny. I, I only hit my 60 out of the bunker. Really? Or if I have like a green side flop shot that I mm-hmm. need to hit. I, I do not take a full swing with it. I do not take a full swing with my 56. I hit traps with my wedges. So sure. I'm trap. I'm, I think that's why I like that. The 60 to me is more like a 56. Mm-hmm. It's I'm closing it down. And yeah. even out of a bunker, not out of okay. a bunker, out no, of just, a bunker. Uh, I, I love it. Yeah. It's a little For, hooded. Yeah. Okay. And so I love, I love hitting. I love a 60 out of a bunker too. I I hit 60 out of every bunker I play. See, I think I could, I yeah. think I could leave mm-hmm. my 60 at home. Really? I, I used it twice today, and both times I was like, oh, I didn't really need to do that. Because yeah, 56 is just eh, crack it open a little bit. You got a 60. I think it, it depends on if you're comfortable laying it yeah. open or not. And yeah. for me, I, I I feel more comfortable laying open a 60 than I do a 56. Mm. Why? I have no idea. I, just I'm do. the same way in yeah. that regard. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. sometimes out of the bunker, I'll even hit gap wedge. Like, I'd just be like, oh, I've got a lot of green to work with. This way, if I fat it, who cares? Yeah. Because I feel like if I did that with a 60, it just kind of dribble out. Yeah, yeah. But, you, I mean, you're also the same way, though, with your chipping. Like, you'll chip with everything all the way up to, like, an 8-iron. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I'm good Variety with that, is too. Variety spice of yeah. life. I, sure. I look at, like, for me, it, if it's, if I'm inside three feet of the edge of the green, I might putt. Yeah. If I'm outside of that, I start looking at what gets the ball on the green the quickest and rolling. Yeah. And but it depends on what's between me and the hole too. Yeah. I mean, ends up on a ledge. You're gonna are you gonna lift it up there? Or are you gonna roll it up there? Mm. You got 45 feet of green to work with, and it's up on top. What are you gonna do? <laughs> That's a tough one because uh, I would probably dumped him. I would no. I'd probably still do like a 52 Get it on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe not at, not get it on the ground as quick, but get it up there. But then I start thinking about controlling the spin. Control yep. it, you know, it might be easier to bump a eight iron and let it just yeah, roll I'm up there. Sitting here giggling, thinking about a six, a sixty. My two shots today, the sixty mm-hmm. were just abysmal. They were horrible, <laughs> and and both because of them, you never use it. Yeah, both of them. I'm like, well, I chip with it. I got it in my hand, and it literally went four feet off the over the fringe, and then took one hop and just stopped. Well, I needed to go 40 more feet. <laughs> so this didn't work. Yeah, I'm like, I look at it and I go, why do we even have this thing in my golf bag? But yeah. yeah. You should practice with it. Random. Take it to the range. Yeah. I'm oh. a 56 degree wedge for every chip shot. <laughs> Everything. Really? All I around the green. Everything's a 56. No. I think that's brilliant. Because it is. You get I get really I, good with it and familiar. And you yeah. know what? You know what? You, you know what's going to react. Yeah. You, you can manipulate. 
you know, if you if you cut across it outside to in, you get a little more spin. Yep. If you need yep. it to roll, you go inside to out. Yep. Mm-hmm. You lay it open, you hood it. You know, that's how that, I, that's that's how I do my chip shots. Unless I'm really short sighted, I need to get it up in the air. Yeah. I lay open the sixty. I've yeah. always believed that you choose one way or the other. You are a multiple wedge person pick for what you're going to use or you're a one wedge person that use manipulates it for every shot i changed you changed yeah i you was, went you were a wedge one all through wedge, high school a one wedge dude was a one wedge dude mm-hmm. i've still got it granny it was a little it was a golf club you've heard me talk about it i've it's seen a, it in action oh yeah it's, it's a phenomenal wedge granny a granny. It, granny. I was at the home course. This little old lady left her wedge behind, uh-huh. and I picked it up. I'm like, oh, this actually looks pretty good. You didn't turn it in? No, I was going to go catch her. And I thought, oh, well, maybe okay. I'll hit a shot yeah. with it. Let's see and how it, I turn this on. And yeah. it huh? went yeah. in. I hit it oh. from 40 yards, and it went in, and I went, if she comes back, or like I took it to the Shh. clubhouse, I'm like, if that lady comes back asking for the club, I'll bring it back in. You're right. Never she got never asked. Never got asked. And that, I mean, maybe this is good for the audience. I would love to find a replace. I would love to find a backup because I'd like oh, to put it back in play. What is it? It's called a custom ground. It's literally what it's called. It's probably a Walmart club. Wow. But it is phenomenal. But I was a 56 only because I had three through pitching wedge and a 56 mm-hmm. and a putter. So I did that forever. 56 only. Yeah. I was three through pit the same way. Yeah. yeah. Then, I, I didn't have a 60 until two years ago. And then I decided really? to change things mm-hmm. up. Wow. Yeah. And my first, I bought my first out of the bunker. Do what? And now it's the only thing you ever hit out of the bunker. Yeah. That's it's the amazing. only, only thing I hit out of the bunkers. It, I mean, unless it's like uh, a long bunker shot, like 13. Like if I'm in a fairway bunker, that's close to the green that you can yeah. maybe get it. I'll hit a 56 or something, but yeah. I typically only hit a 60 wow. out of every, every one. Huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, Love it. What's your actual go-to shot? So I would probably say that if I'm going <laughs> to yeah, talk... Yeah. The question, John. Yeah, the answer it, please. Topic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the actual, where I will put it, is not in a specific yardage. If I need to hit something online and not lose that golf ball, it's a knockdown shot. And that's driver, three wood, all the way to like a five iron. Mm. Uh, you know, for those of you that don't live in Kansas... It blows like hell here. So <laughs> there, are times, there are times there are times you're talking like, about the wind, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. The wind, All right. The wind not, not it blows to live here. No, but, no, okay. no. Uh, <laughs> it's a great place to live other than the wind. Uh, but yeah, he, that's my shot is I will take, I mean, Dave's watched me hit it quite a few times off of hundreds. 13 T. Mm-hmm. I will take something on a windy day and just hood it and just mm-hmm. hit a dead stripe five foot high. Mm-hmm. Scream and knock down. That's my and three wood. Always that's my three the, wood right now. That's what it, I would say that's my go to shot. Yeah. Is I can <laughs> if I can I know I know how to hit a low three wood. Yeah. But when I say I know how to hit it, I don't know how I'm doing it. I'm just hitting this low amazing bullet yeah. three wood. Yes. And they go dead straight. The one No, hit, this does not go oh, dead straight. <laughs> it, it, go goes, it goes it's a it's a low screaming not like a hook scream, but like just a bullet coming out of a gun with, with a, a voluptuous draw. Yes, with okay. a like 15 yard draw. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. The no. one you hit on number five today yeah. was insane. It looked like he hit it thin. It did not get above his eyeballs. <laughs> and For, that thing took off. Like with your drive? <laughs> it's with three wood. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, so with my cool. drive. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. off from the tee. Okay. Yeah. I was yeah. like, the yeah. approach? That's I hit the weird. same shot. I don't think you were watching, but I hit almost identical shot on 13. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I, and I was, was left side. Yeah. yeah. I, I had a restroom break. Yes, you did. While, while mm-hmm. you were hitting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 10-100. Mm-hmm. Yes. 10-100. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the 10-200 is a story for a different day. Yeah. <laughs> I have no Same idea hole. what you're talking about. Same hole. Okay. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. But John, I, mm-hmm. I've seen him take out driver on holes. And I'm like, what is he doing? Yeah. And it, it, he'll intentionally, high. it won't go higher than his belt buckle. Uh-huh. And it'll still go out there 200 yards. Yeah. Yeah. And it'll get fast straight. I feel like I could hit that shot through a tornado. Yeah. See, and it I doesn't need, balloon I think, or anything. Uh-uh. I think that's what I, you know, next year, 2022, whatever year it is, uh, I want to figure out what is my, like, go-to shot, reliable. Yeah. Because, like, for me, I struggle losing balls off the tee and stuff like that. I yeah. want to be able to be, like, yeah. a bunch and, of drive out there or something now. And when I say go-to shot knockdowns, I, I play a lot. when If it's a competition round, I bet I hit three or four of those things off the tee. Yeah. Because I'm like, well, this hole looks tight. You know, I'll give up 20 yards and just find short grass somewhere. Nice. Yeah. And it works. It's like a very amateur golfer version of Tiger Stinger. Yeah. yeah. With his three wood. Mm. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. 
I'd say, I'd say, you know, I feel like a three iron for me, if I need to put a ball in the fairway, three iron yeah. for me. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, I agree. Like, it, mm-hmm. You know, I know not very many people might be familiar with Sycamore, but the 18th mm-hmm. hole is a dogly great par five. Mm-hmm. And it, it doesn't necessarily neck, but you're always hitting into the wind. Oh, yeah. And that's always for me is like a three or four iron, just, you know, just a little bit of a knockdown, it's going to go right in the middle of the fairway. Like mm. for me, it's like not even a question. And it probably goes back to confidence a little yeah. bit that I'm confident yeah. that I can do it. Yeah. But it's it's my go-to for mm. sure. Yeah. The only club I know I'm going to hit straight every time is a seven iron. <laughs> wow. They're that money. I know. I don't even know money. that. That I 100% yeah. know will go straight is that seven iron. Because, you know, I still have my struggles off the tee, even though lately things have been going pretty well. Yeah. I still don't know when something's going to grab me. You know, last week on Sunday, coming up nine, I'm one under, and I blow a drive all the way right into the driving range. Mm. Should have hit seven iron off the tee. Exactly. Yeah. And then today, I do just the opposite. I'm like, probably subconsciously, I was saying, don't hit it right. Yeah. <laughs> Even and though the wind left. was blowing yeah. right to left, yeah. and then I just yanked it to the left. See, and that's where I, what I'm, what, what you're talking about, the, the wind is right to left there. Mm-hmm. I'm more like hit it hard up that right side yeah. and let the, let wind, the wind bring it back. It. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I was, that's yeah. what I thought I was thinking to myself. You weren't. But I think somewhere <laughs> deep down in the, in the medulla oblongata. Yeah, your subconscious, <laughs> it, your, your brain was like, no, no, no we're not good. Yeah, we're just going to go ahead and snipe uh, this one. Yeah. yeah. And man, yeah. the tree it was up against had these five inch thorns. Coming oh off yeah. Of Thorny locusts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. God Ended bless. Up, Ooh. That was an unplayable. Yeah. So. Yeah, it happens. Well, we know our go-to shots now. Yeah. So yeah. I guess the, the thing is, is golfers figure out your listeners, the tens of listeners. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> you figure three. out. Go to yeah, the right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we at least have six. You know, yeah. there's yeah. us three. Uh-huh. And then, you know, there's some other people. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, that's good. So what's coming up on what are we going to do? What are we doing with the gripping golf? What's coming up here? We got tons of stuff, right? Yeah, we got a lot of ideas. Yeah, so we do, and yeah. we put them into our project management tool. Yes. Yeah, uh-huh. and, and this this segment here is us being accountable and, yeah. and trying to actually get the stuff done. Yeah, so. we were gonna lose some weight. This is how we're doing it. We're gonna tell <laughs> yeah. the listeners what we're gonna what do. we're gonna do. Our game plan, and we're gonna take pictures of ourselves and post them online. Are we? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But that's what people do when they yeah. want to lose weight. They go, okay. this is me keeping myself accountable, Facebook. I'm not accountable. Okay, good. But we'll, we'll yeah. try. I All will right. try. You, you you both are Okay, well, Dave and I will take yeah. pictures Drag of me each along. other. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> it will be fully clothed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, like, yeah, what, what, what are we going to do? Reviews. We're going to be doing some reviews. Yeah, we got some, love some products. products. Uh, because as, as we've discussed multiple times, mm-hmm. I buy stuff. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, training aids that we yeah. think might be beneficial yeah. for people. So, yeah. uh, we'll try to do some video product reviews on some of those things. Um, you know, clubs, training aids, yeah. Yeah. clothing, shoes, golf courses, golf Ooh. courses, Ooh. trying to get out there and okay. review some yeah. golf courses, range yeah. finders, yeah. all kinds of stuff like yeah. that. So wearables. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, edibles. It, sure. Maybe. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, but you know, it, whatever we think might be helpful for somebody, we'll, we'll try to do a review on that. Yeah, yeah. And if you have ideas and you're still listening, message us on Facebook or social media and let yeah, us know yeah. what you think we should do. Yeah. yeah. We'll set up an email for everybody yeah. to, to email us questions or thoughts yeah. on stuff they want to see us try. Or just messages on social media. Yeah, that works too. <laughs> <Is> that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, whatever. Um, the email will come. Yeah. But yeah, right sure. now it's not there. Yeah. So. Yeah. That, that's probably a pretty easy fix, though. Um, so product reviews. Uh, we yeah. talked about doing some on-course videos as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, would be yeah. Great. yeah. Yeah. Watching us uh, slash it around yeah. various yeah. golf shoots. R- R- watching us shoot some shots. Yeah. Shoot some shots. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. One out of ten will be impressive. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So It'll we'll, be real good. They'll be like, damn, these guys are... N- not good golfer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. They sound yeah. like they're good, yeah. but maybe they're not. Really? Billy's a 2.4? <laughs> Interesting. Wow. Yeah. Yeek. Yeah. 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 It's a low bar. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I can have a podcast too. Yeah. 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 So it's uh, on the course stuff, some stuff on the range, some fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, just various things. The flop shot challenge. Yeah, we oh. can do a flop shot Oh, yeah. Shot I want to do the spin. I want the killer bee. Oh, yeah. yeah. Totally yeah. going to throw killer yeah. bee on there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. 
going to be good. Yeah. Uh huh. So I've got a bunch of ridiculous clubs that we'll try out. John's yeah. got some long driver. Mm-hmm. You got a 48 inch driver or something? We'll or? make one. Yeah. Okay. We'll make one and cool. see. Bring let's the, let's test screw it on the up our swing so bad that we can't play. Ooh, a 48 inch driver is just a tempo builder. Yeah. Well, That's all it is. Their swing smooth. I only know one tempo, and that's 110%. Yeah. And it's going to yeah. be well, your hard. Swing with is the flat f- enough that it, you'll be fine with a 40 inch. Yeah. It'd be a lot of abdominal torquing. We all know and love Daniel Brumley. Oh, yeah. He'll. And Daniel could probably drive 18. Hit the 47 yeah. on five at Sycamore. Uh-huh. And he was damn near on the green. Oh. I mean, I'm not when, trying to when, humble brag here. I've almost been on the green with the driver I have now. Yeah, but he was almost on the green, like all the way whole high through the fairway. That's where I've been. Oh, okay. Bill. Yes. <laughs> oh, driver Lord. technology has yeah. come a long yeah. 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 ten years yeah. since a, the forty-seven inch oh, FT five. Yeah. No, we yeah. did that when he when Brumley might have had the nine hundred five. Yeah, it was oh, it was wow. a yeah. long time ago. But well, yeah, we're he, gonna do it again. He yeah. hit that like if we did a new forty-eight and made him hit it, that would actually you know what maybe that's what we do is we I have think a, he has we have a Brumley Billy driving distance challenge. Ooh, I think he can take me. I really he's do. a he's, beast. He's got some serious speed. Ball speed. Oh yeah. man, he can move mm-hmm. the ball. Yeah. But yeah. that you know what? you've come up in the you've come up in the world. I'm getting there. I yeah. think maybe with that and a 48 inch driver. I eat my Wheaties. It's not you know I don't think my club head speed has changed very much. It's the ball the, more solid. I'm hitting the ball solid. Yeah. I'm releasing the energy at the right time. Did you I mean, just say you know, solider? Yeah. I don't know what you I did said. Say did I say solider? Sure solider. Yeah. 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 <laughs> more but, solid. But I mean there there you go. That's a great point. Hit the ball yeah. more solid. Even if you swing slow or you shorten your driver. It's all about sequencing. It is. Yeah. yeah. So but maybe we have a Brumley Brumley uh Billy challenge. Oh yeah. yeah. That would be awesome. A Brumley Billy beat off. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. I Yikes. think we found the YouTube title. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Exactly. Look what? for it. What are you watching? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead and Google that. Everybody. Explicit title on this yeah, one. Go ahead yeah. And exactly. That. Oops. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, good. Yeah. Challenges. Uh, course reviews. A lot of good yeah. stuff. A lot of, oh my gosh. Lots of fun stuff Changed. we want to bring for yeah. everybody. Yeah. We're Changed gonna. Up. We're to each taking off a month of work. We're yeah. gonna do this solid. Yeah. Sabbaticals. Uh-huh. Exactly. Yeah. This is the note to your works right yes, now. Yeah. <laughs> Need September and October off. Uh, Thank you. Well, Perfect. we good? I, I think, think we're was good. It's yeah. a solid episode. Everything. Great conversation. Oh my yeah. gosh. We should do this more often. We really yeah. should. Maybe every week? Like every week. I yeah. think we should try. I think it's great. All right. Awesome. All right. Thanks, listeners. You betcha. Take care. <laughs>